This is the Canyon Aero CF SLX belonging to Mikel Lander of the Movistar team. Now Lander himself, he's pretty good when it comes to the Giro d'Italia. He's been third overall back in 2015. He also won two stages that year and he won one back in 2017 too. Let's have a look at the bike which he's hoping is going to take him to overall victory in this year's Giro d'Italia. Let's start with the frame then. Lander, he stands at 5 foot 8, which is 1 meter 73 roughly. And the frame size he's opted for is extra small. Now in pros, they tend to size down by one size because they're pretty flexible and they're able to put a long stem on there too to aid with their position. The colour scheme of the bike, I reckon, is one of the best in the World Tour. The way it comes from this light blue into navy blue, you start to see other teams begin to, well, copy them, if you like, because they've seen exactly how good it looks. Right, let's talk handlebars then. Well, we've got an integrated pair of bars here. They're carbon fibre and they are the Canyon own brand specific handlebars. Now, they're the H36 model. The stem length is 110 millimetres and the width of the bars at the brake lever hoods at the centres is 41 centimetres. Meters. Now, there's no satellite shifters fitted on this bike or anything like that because Campagnolo, well, they don't make any. The bars themselves, they're wrapped up in this Lizard Skins handlebar tape, one of my personal favourites. It's ultra sticky, ultra grippy, and importantly, comes with this great finishing tape there that the team sponsored by Lizard Skins always seem to use. In the case here, we've got the Movistar logos on the front, and that is just a great finishing touch on them, as is the Canyon logos, which go across the front central part of the handlebar too. That doesn't come as standard when you buy those bars. This is like a pro team issue only bit of kit. And fitted just underneath that logo too is the GPS mount here as well. And then just behind that, you can see neatly tucked away is the EPS controller, so the EPS interface. That allows the mechanics to be able to adjust the indexing of the gears and also be able to set them up. Fitted onto the bars, well, we've got Campagnolo Super Record EPS in 12 speed. The cable which exits the EPS interface is then binded on by this sort of spiral plastic to the rear brake cable which then passes through into the internals of the frame towards the derailleurs. Wheels wise we've got a pair of Campagnolo Bora Ultra in the 50mm depth rim. Now these ones they've been customised as you can see in the Movistar blue and I think that looks great and it's always a nice little finishing touch for a pair of wheels. Also fitted onto the wheels are these Continental Competition Pro Limited ALX tyres so they've got a latex inner tube inside of them. Generally they're only available to the professionals because the latex inner tube provides slightly lower rolling resistance. Now that cassette, that's Campagnolo Super Record and it matches up perfectly to the rear derailleur which is a Campagnolo Super Record EPS. The front one, yep, again that's Super Record EPS also. Chain set wise, we've got Campagnolo Super Record crank arms and fitted onto it is a power to max NG power meter as you can see here. And the blue colour of that power meter spider actually really matches up well with the frame. The crank length, so that's 170 millimetres and chainring ratios 53-39. The pedals, they're the Look Kio carbon blade and the blade tension is 16 newton metres. So that's how much pressure it takes to release your ankle from the pedals. Saddle wise, we've got a Physique Antares R1 open. So we've got a channel in here, which has a little opening all the way through, as well as just slightly indented too, just to help relieve a little bit of pressure there. That's mounted onto the Canyon S27 seat post, which is specific for this frame. Now this has got 15 millimeters of layback, but you can get them with other amounts too. So it doesn't like to be too far behind the bottom bracket on this one. Finishing touches wise, well, there's not a load on here really. You don't seem to find that many on the Grand Tour contenders, but we have got the race number here, number one, although he didn't finish in the first place last year. This is the team slot that the Giro d'Italia organizers have in fact given the squad. We've also got the race transponder down here on the non-drive side chainstay, and also a pair of Elite Leggero uh, water bottle cages made out of carbon fiber here. Other than that, there's only one more thing. Have you spotted? It yet? Nope. All right, I'll give it away. It's this chain catcher. It's mounted beneath the actual bottle cages here on the seat tube. So it's quite long in its size, but then it does a great job of just curving down just inside of that inner chain ring. That is one of my favourite chain catchers there is. Measurements wise, well, from the top of the saddle to the centre of the bottom bracket is 71 centimetres. From the tip of the saddle to the centre of the bars, 54. And the drop from the saddle to the handlebars, that's 12 centimetres. 
And the weight of the bike, 7.38 kilos. There we are, the bike of Mikael Lander. Let me know what you think of it down there in the comments section below. Don't forget to, to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big old thumbs up. And also, don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for two more great pro bikes, have a clicking just down here and just down here.